Welcome to Expression and Painting by Paul Creamy. Tonight I brought in three paintings. I brought in a couple of abstract religious paintings. This one's called Tablet Number Seven. It's the, a painting that I've been been doing for years. It, it's it's a, a combination of spirituality and abstract. It, if you ever read Interior Castles by Trusta Oliveira, this is just moving through different levels of spirituality till you get to heaven. And these figures turn white and they get to heaven. All the prayers. And then the, going through the baptism down here with the water. And then all of the other trials and tribulations of our lives. So this one, I did this about two years ago. And I've been wanting to do another one to be a complimentary piece to it. And I just haven't had the right feeling. So just a couple of weeks ago, somebody gave me this beautiful panel. And I said, finally, I have a piece that I want to paint the second in this series. I might do more if I can come up with the right situation. But this panel here was a raised panel, a door panel, really. It's set in. And so this one here is called the Holy of Holies. You got the little figures down here. I mean, there's all this activity around the edge, all of the stuff that you go through in your life. And then this section here, the red, this deals with the blood of Christ and you're cleansed. And this section here deals with heaven. So you're in this Holy of Holy kind of experience. So I'm really thrilled with the way this painting came out. It's quite powerful. And I'm getting great feedback on uh, Facebook and LinkedIn. In the third painting I brought in, the same person, my friend Jim, gave me a bunch of panels. And he gave me this panel. And I was all excited. It's, it's a tombstone door panel. And I went back to my Marine uh, Museum School mentality when I studied Monet at the Museum School in Boston and the water lilies. And I really love the feeling of it. It has this real beautiful impressionistic, com completely comfortable, soft feeling. And I'm quite pleased with the way it came out. And so tonight, I'm going to bring a black canvas in. I've got it right here. And I'll show you what I'm going to paint. I'm going to paint the coast of Maine I've been painting this, in fact, if you went to French Memories in Cohasset, Mass, they have a bunch of these coastal paintings that I've just finished. I've been painting a whole series. Here's the photograph. It's quite quiet, and I'll hold it up. And it's got this harbor. It's, got, it's not upside down. It's got a reflection, and it's got the harbor, and it's got this little boat. I don't know if I'll put the boat in. I don't know if I'll have time tonight. But I'm going to do the water, and I'm going to do the little island, and, and we're going to do the reflection. And so that's what we're going to do tonight. So I'll put this up here, and I'll start. I'm going to start with a big brush, just to get the background done. All right. So I'm starting with using gesso white and three different blues. I'm just going to put the blue right on the canvas. Really wet. I also got my blower, so I'm not worried about it being too wet. And I start with the black canvas because I love the effect that the black does on the color. And I paint the sides black too, so I don't have to deal with it afterwards. So I've got four different blues and I'm mixing them all together. I've got people out there asking me, well, what color are you using? Well, I'm using four different I want to a real powerful blue when I'm done. I want it to be 
in your face blue. So I'm just going to block in the background, get this done, and then I'll dry it. And then I'll do... And you know, I've got this mindset lately that there's no difference in the horizon line in the, in the, the line of painting that I'm going to do. They're all going to be the same. And I had my friend say to me, wow, you should put a few clouds in these paintings, Paul. They're just so naked and plain. And I said, yeah, well, if you looked at my photograph, my photograph is real white. All of the, it's all washed out white. And that wouldn't work. So I'll be doing this beautiful blue. And you go, I got, got this mentality. I want this real, quiet, peaceful, serene painting. Don't be afraid to use a lot of paint, too. I mean, I, I know a lot of artists are afraid because they don't want to spend the money and all that. But if you're painting a painting and you're really taking it serious, don't be afraid to use the paint. So I've got this pretty much covered now. I, I believe when you paint something like this to go all the way across the canvas. Try not to uh, stop your strokes all the way across the canvas. Give you a nice, nice even flow of the color. In this particular kind of a painting, perfect. All right, let me dry this a little. Wouldn't you know it, I put the panel right on top of it. The wire. There you go. All right. And you're going to be shocked. This painting is going to appear, just really appear. I painted so many of these, every time I paint them, I get a thrill, because they just sort of come out of nowhere. So it's got a lot of streaks. I'm not happy with it. So I'm going to go back and get a, a big, a stronger brush and put a little more blue on. A little, a little darker. If you saw how much paint I put on this tray, you'd crack up. I almost painted the canvas blue before I came, so I wouldn't have to do all of this in front of you. But you know something, I wanted to do it to show you. This is what I go through, and I do this over and over. Sometimes I'll spend half a day just getting the blue on the canvas. And people will look at me and say, what are you, crazy? And I want it to have a certain effect. And it's going to have a certain quality. There's a 
a little piece of paint there I don't want. Get out of here. And people say, how does, your, how does your easel get all this color? Well, that's how it gets all this color. All right, let's try this again. And when I'm putting the paint on, I, I don't mix it with a lot of water. I try to keep it. I got water all over. I got all over the floor here. I'll fix it afterwards. Let me take a look. I still see some lines. It's going to be a while. I'm not happy with it. I'm going to go over it again. This is what you've got to do. When you're doing something like this, sometimes it takes five or six coats to get it to the right shade. You've just got to be patient with yourself because once you get the, the blue on, once you get this done, the painting is, is in its right position because the rest of it comes on really quick. You can see why I wanted to paint it blue first. But I, wanted, I didn't want to get up here with a blue canvas because people will be saying, oh, well, look at you're painting with a blue canvas. And you're going to say it changed the whole concept of your painting. And it's really black underneath and then the blue. Okay. Nice. All right, I got a step. Okay, let's go. I'm going to get a small brush and do some drawing in the sense that we're going to put the marks on the canvas that make it look like what we're doing. So we got this. I'm going to bring it to the camera again and hold it up. We got this little island with trees. We got this little tiny fishing boat. And that's what I'm going to do next. Now, I'm going to do a little island. So, and it's up pretty high. Whoops. It's up pretty high in the, uh, in the photograph. So, here's what I do. I take three or four colors, touch of black, sandy, little gesso,
A little more gesso. And here we go. Okay. Here's my island. And I'm going to put the island in. And I'm going to put the rocks in all at once. Just take your time. I've mixed up three or four different colors, and the blue is still kind of bleed through because it's still not completely dry. That's all right. I'm going to go further across. It's only going to leave a little space on the other side. But you see, I don't hesitate. I've got it in my mind what I'm going to do. I've got the photograph right in front of my face. And I've got my mind made up. This is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to go do it. I keep doing it until I get that position where I want it. And it'll start to it'll start to come together. You'll start to see it, and you'll say, "Oh my God, he put that together in no time." So now I'm going to throw some of these rocks in. Get a little black, a little dark brown. And there's a, there's a white ridge right up here. I'm not going to pull around with that. I'm going to put these rocks in. And I'm going to put the pebbles in too. I'm going to put some of the lower stuff and go a little further down, a little lighter. So it gets a little wider as it goes back to this side, it gets a little narrower. Let me step over here now, take a look. Oh yeah, this is starting to look good, starting to have it, starting to get there. I got some... I like that little, little light line running across the top. All right, take the blower. And I build this up. I build it up. That's how I do this. I keep putting layers and layers and layers of color on top of color until I get it built up so it looks like the photograph. That's what I do. It's nothing very difficult about doing this. So 
They cut all of these ledges and rocks. So just throw some black in, throw a few black lines and keep going over it and touching it like this and the rocks will start to appear. And they'll start to have that kind of island effect. And don't get panicky if it doesn't look right because we're going to keep going over this and over this until it gets there. And it will get there right in front of your eyes. Every time. Never fails. Okay, we're going to do a few trees. Let me throw a few rocks at the top here. And then we're going to do the trees. Got a couple of nice big ones up here. Great. Okay. Now the trees... a little black line like this. That's enough. Oh, we go all the way over to the edge with these. All right, now, now the trees. I just sort of dab the canvas with the brush. And everything that I do up the top, I'm going to do down here. And you're going to see this whole picture take face. And it, once I get going, it's going to have a whole life of its own. I love painting the scenes. Maine is my favorite place. I love to go there. In fact, I'm going in a couple of weeks. And I'm looking so forward. I haven't been up for a couple of years. There's been always something coming up. But those coming up things are done. I'm going to Maine. I was telling my friend and telling my wife. My wife doesn't like to go up to Maine. It's five hours to get there and... It, now she's just not one for driving five mile hours in a car. I drive five days to get to Maine. That's how much I love it. It's so beautiful up there. Or down there, whatever you want to say. All right, let me get back here. Yeah, this is looking good. Looking really good. I'm just roughing these in now. I'm not trying to make them look like great trees. This is just get the paint on the canvas right now. As, as I get into it and as I dry it a little, then I'll start to really put the, 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 the texture on the trees. But I'm just blocking it in. In fact, I've gone a little higher than the, than the, um, the picture. I've designed this painting to be a little different than the picture, which is all right with me. I mixed a little dark blue with this particular tree. 
I want it to have a little different feeling. I haven't done any detail on any of these trees, and I will as I get further into the painting. I just want to step back and see what this looks like. Going after this, Cameron. They're going real fast. This is how you dot. So you, I've scratched it in now. I'm going to take a look. Yeah, it's kind of dark. It looks like it doesn't have any life. It's kind of, kind of weird looking. But in a minute, when I start to do the detail, you'll start to see it change. All right, let's take some of the... water out of the paint. Now don't forget, you're in charge. You, I have a photograph, but I don't have to use the photograph. Photograph is a stepping stone. You know, it isn't the uh, ultimate copy thing. If I wanted to copy it, I could take the photograph and have it put on the canvas and paint on top of the photograph. There's some people that do that. Quite a bit of people do that. I, I don't like it, personally. I don't think it's cheating or anything. I just don't like it. I don't want it to have that photographic look. I want it to have a painted look. I want it to be kind of impressionistic. Beautiful. We're really moving right along. This is going to be gorgeous. I love it. So I've got it roughed in. I've got it blocked in a day, as I say. Now I'm going to go back and do the detail. I'm going to put the rocks on the foreground. I'm going to do all of the small stuff. I'm going to get my small brushes, do the things that make the difference.
All right, let me get some black out. I, I, think, I, I think I used up all the black. Good. Okay. Good job. Missed the bucket. All right. Touch the black, touch the brown, and go in here. That's the gold. Black again. All right, now I'm going to do the rocks. And this is the fun part. This is what I do. I touch the canvas with the brush, and all of a sudden, then the first, everything is built up. Everything is in layers. Everything that you do when you paint is on, uh, uh, layers, and, and layers and layers and layers. So we just keep going after this. We go across the canvas. We cover up. We put all of these little dots in. And it looks silly. And I do this all day long. A million, thousand, billion rocks on every single one. But as it builds up, you're going to see it. It's going to start to transform it and change it and have this really coastal, quiet, peaceful, serene, serenity kind of feeling. And that's what I'm looking for. I have painted about 150 paintings like this lately. I don't know what's gotten into me. I, I must be, because I've gotten the birch tree thing out of my system, maybe. And so that I've gone back and started painting Maine. And I haven't been to Maine for, like I said, two or three years. And, and I'm looking at these photographs that I take, and I'm saying, got to get there. I want to go take some new photographs. I, and, and of course, it, Maine doesn't change. Maine's Maine. Maine's going to look the same all the time. It's just that there's this part of me that's got to get there kind of thing. So I got that first layer down. And now I go back and I start with the second layer. And I make it a little lighter than the first layer. And I know, you're sitting back there saying, oh my God, the rocks are starting to come. And they are. They're starting to get here. They're starting to come out. And that's, this is the part I love, because I, I'll go sit in the rocking chair after I've done three or four of these layers, and I'll sit there for about half an hour looking at the painting, but I don't fall asleep. I've stopped talking. I was just doing a little concentration. It's 
throw a little green. Oh. All right. We got the some of the rocks down. I'm going to go after the trees now. I'm going to go back. Let me dry these rocks for a second. go back to the tree. So now I take the light green and I mix it with the dark green. I start giving it a little more of its personality. put some dark in there and then I'm going to put some light on top. You can tell I've done this a little. It has that kind of mentality of doing things over and over and over and for years and years and years and all of a sudden all of those years and all of that stuff it starts to make it so much easier And you just keep putting layer after layer after layer of color and moving it back and forth, back and forth. And don't be afraid. Just stab the canvas, get it down, get it in there. Light color, dark color, light color, dark color. Rub them together. And when you do the water, try not to leave it as bulky as up in the trees. Try to get it a little flatter and a little less bulky. Like, I don't want to see any buildup on the paint on the canvas on the water because it's a reflection. So you don't, you don't want all that buildup that you have in the trees at the top. You just want the light to have the effect, but not the buildup. I know all of this stuff subconsciously, and I'm just telling you because... If I don't tell you, then, then you, when you do it, you're going to look at it and say, what's wrong with this thing? 
And that's going to be the reason. And so everything you do when you paint, you go over it and over it and over it and over it. And eventually, after you've gone over it enough, it starts to really have a feeling. And then when you have that feeling, that's when you put the brush down and go sit in the chair and look at it. Because you don't want to overwork it. Better to get away from it and go, go to bed or go for a walk or go have lunch or go have supper or just get away from it. You don't want to kill it. You know, just keep, now step back, take a look. Let me just dry this for a second. I know we're running out of time, and I gotta get ready, do those rocks again. I'm really painting this quite fast. I mean, it doesn't look like it, but <laughs> I know a lot of artists wouldn't be where I am right now. All right. Now we're going to go back and do some more rocks. There's always this little line, this little white line. That's where the water line is. Now I've got all that underneath built up. So when I'm hitting it with the side of the brush, All the stuff in the back bottom is starting to bleed through. And you start to see these beautiful, quiet, soft rocks. People say, well, how do you get those rocks? They're fabulous. And I says, you just layer it. You just keep layering it. And, and it, it, the technique, I don't know what the technique is. I just know that I have been doing this for years and years and years and years. And it took me years. People say, oh my God, Paul, you do the most incredible rocks. And I look at them and I said, they're just layers and layers of color. And they, I mean, I, I, I'm trying to help these other artists that ask me constantly how to get these rocks to look like this. This is how I do it. And I got friends of mine are saying, you shouldn't give away your secrets. You shouldn't give away your secrets. No secrets. No secrets. There's no secrets in painting.
Painting is painting. Painting is work. You know what I've been doing? I've been photographing these paintbrushes. <laughs> and I've been posting them as photographs. And I've been putting little clips on, little uh, sayings like, I want to paint. He said we could paint today. And I've never worked so hard for anybody. Stuff like that. Oh, my God. And it's so funny when you see it against the photograph. Go over it. If you don't like it, go over it again. Because eventually you'll get it. And in Maine, they have, all of the rocks have this white covering. I don't know. They're really cool. That's a little too white. Get a little crazy here. But... And every once in a while, you have this big old black boulder like this, just sitting there like he's in charge of the beach, right there. That one's in charge of the beach, and that's a reflection over here. And I go to the tiny brushes. Get some of the tiny brushes. Oh, I mean, people say to me, how do your brushes get like this? And I says, well, they've been with me for a few years. <laughs> They're like family. I had a student, and he went home, and he bought brand new brushes, and he went and cut them all up so that they were like these ones. And I said, God, what a shame. <sighs> Now I want to do that little, like I said, that little water line. I'm going to fill that in. All right, I want to step back and take a good look because I've been working on this thing for quite a while now. And take nice. The trees are a little dark, so don't get discouraged about if the trees are a little dark. Just go back and take your small brush and start doing it again. Just little marks. Don't have to be real powerful, just little marks.
I'm going to take some of this bleach white and mix it with the green. Get a little lighter so the, these edges. That's going to be real light. I'm going to go over it again. I'm building it up so don't get nervous. And you just keep going over it and over it. And you'll, you'll build it up and it'll start to have this really beautiful feeling. And now the, the water's kind of moving, so you got to do a little squiggly thing. So take it, that light stuff that you just mixed. And don't be afraid of this. This is the greatest thing about painting. Just keep going over and over, and all of a sudden, it'll start to, to, to do what you want it to do. You can get real brave and touch it with a little white. Just a tiny bit. Very, very gently. Because it's really quite. Say, oh my God, you're going to wreck it. You're going to wreck it. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Then take the blue.
And you keep doing this until you get that water movement ever so slightly. You can't mess it up. You're the painter. You're the person in charge. I mean, I, I've done this, then I've gone over the whole entire painting again. And I said, oh, I screwed it up, and I went over the whole painting. As I get older, I realize I can't screw it up. I'm in charge. Whatever it is, it is. What I want it to be. I'm going to go back, do some more with the trees. Because this dries, it gets darker. And you think, oh my God, you're messing it up. As it gets darker, it, get, it, it loses that effect that you're looking for. You're looking for that branches coming out effect. So, boy, we're getting close to the end here. So what I've done is I've taken this photograph of this harbor scene. I've only got three minutes, so I want to get to this, to end this. Okay, I'll put down the brush. I brought this photograph. Here's the photograph. I'm going to show you again. And we've painted this in an hour. We've sketched it out. We blocked it in. And we've got this beautiful, quiet harbor scene. It's not complete yet. This will have to dry. And it, when I come in in the morning, I'll touch it up a little. But you can feel the rocks and the water and, and the trees and the reflection. And I might put this little boat right here. It, it's got a little boat. I might put that little boat right in here because it really needs something in that area. And I think that'll finish it off. But I couldn't do it tonight. And I, I did a lot, considering I only had an hour. It, 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 you can't imagine the texture this has. I'm standing here, and I'm looking at it, and I'm saying to myself, this really looks great. It has this strong, strong feeling. And you know something? I use my thumb like a brush. I, and I swear, I've done more paintings with my fingers and my thumb than with the brush sometimes. I just keep rubbing it around. I take off the bulky stuff and the stuff that's too light. And I go after it because trees have that kind of stuff that goes on. They're all clamming together and squeezed. I have to go over the trees in the water again. I'll fix it. But I wanted to tell you that uh, expression in painting is something we do to teach you how to see. I'm not trying to teach you how to paint the way I paint. I want you to paint the way you paint. But I want to challenge you to be the best painter you can be for yourself. God bless and good night.